Welcome back to Outdoor Empire. I'm Chase and I'm gonna give you 10 hacks for hot tenting that you're gonna to wanna to know just to make your life a little easier when you're out in the woods, especially in winter. So stick around because you're gonna to wanna to hear what I gotta say. Hack number one, pre-cut and split your wood before you go camping. Now the reason I say this, this doesn't necessarily apply in all environments, but where I live when I'm gonna go camping in the snow, like here where I am today, if I hadn't brought wood with me, I wouldn't be having a fire at all. And I also have a stove that's pretty compact. So if you've got a stove, make sure your wood is split and cut at a size so that you can easily fit them in your stove. Have some smaller pieces for kindling, some larger pieces for longer burning, and that'll just make your life a lot easier, save you from going out and fighting the cold to chop wood or saw or anything like that. Hack number two, use a canvas tarp to help pack down snow for your tent pad instead of excavating. Now, this might be a lazy man's way to do it, and I do look for conveniences and shortcuts occasionally, and this is one of them. Where I'm at today, there's about four foot of snow and I really didn't feel like digging that big of a hole. Didn't have the time either because I got a late start. So you lay down a canvas tarp on top of the snow, ideally something that's relatively level. I start by rolling on it like steamroller. It's especially great when my kids are around because they love doing this. Roll on it and then I go and I stomp on it. So I, I can get all those bumps and things down. It, it's easier, you won't end up with as many holes as if you just do it without. Now if you've got snowshoes or skis, that might be an alternative, or you might combine those with a canvas tarp and be even more effective. But I found that a great way to get your tent pad prepared so you can have a nice smooth tent pad without any big potholes in the middle of it. The canvas tarp also comes in handy to put inside your tent and to help add another layer of insulation. Hack number three, dig out the corners to set anchors. Now. When you do like me and you don't dig out all the way to the ground for your tent pad, I found this to be an effective way to get a good anchor on this tent. Now this is a canvas tent that requires, it has to be staked down. Some tents that don't are freestanding, it might not be as a big a deal, but a lot of these canvas and cabin tents need that. So instead of doing that on every one or instead of excavating down to the dirt on every one, I might just go in the four corners and get down to the dirt if possible. Or even if not, like I did here, I just go down a foot or 18 inches or so and I drive that stake in horizontally. And so I stick that in the snow, then I pack that whole hole back with snow, stomp it down pack, and so far that has provided uh, an excellent anchor on my snow camping trips with this. Save yourself a little time, but do put in some good fit footings on the corners. Now if it's really windy or something, you might need to be a bit more extreme, but in my experience, this has been totally sufficient with this kind of a tent. Another tip on that is that I will pull the corners of the tent material down into that hole six inches or eight inches or so, but sometimes I've even gone deeper with my hole to get to the dirt, in which case I use a piece of polycord or I've even repurposed the, the guy lines for the awning for this tent to tie it down, just to connect, make the connection between the stake loop and the stake that's down below. Hack number four. Use some kind of a fire starter. Now I've got a few different fire starters I've used from these Duraflame fire start cubes to a black beard fire starter rope or even some tinder cord. These all work pretty well, but there's a lot of good DIY solutions too. Just a cotton ball with some Vaseline will work excellent. Throw that in there in the bottom, light that with a lighter or a flint and steel, and that'll get your fire going and give it enough time so that you don't have to keep sitting there and babysitting it and you don't need as much tinder either. Now I would also say I've got a USB rechargeable lighter that I love, but as I found out this morning, it went kind of dead on me, and so I'm glad I brought a backup, just typical classic lighter. Now you might also carry with you a ferro rod or some flint and steel. It's always a good idea to have multiple ways to start your fire. Hack number five, bring leather gloves. I like to use this style of ski glove when I'm hot tinting, one, because I already have them for skiing and I like to use things for multiple purposes when I can, but also just because they're very multi-purpose. You can use these not only when you're out and about having fun in the snow, but to set up your tent, to keep that metal stuff when you're putting up the poles and keeping that metal off your bare hands, setting stakes, putting fire in the stove, 
even assembling the stove because it's got a lot of sharp edges and things. So one pair of leather gloves can do it all. Remember, no synthetic. You don't want any synthetic materials around a hot tent because you're going to melt them. And this pair is some one I picked up from Decathlon, my favorite store that I discovered in France. It's a brand called Wedza. It's their own store brand. They're pretty affordable compared to other similar gloves. So I highly recommend these. I'll try to put a link in the description below. Hack number six, hot water bottles in socks in your sleeping bag. A friend of mine calls these hotties. What I do before I go to bed, I'll boil some water on my hot stove with my kettle, and then I'll pour that into my Nalgene bottles, or this could be any water bottle. If you have a metal water bottle, you could even just heat it up directly on the wood stove. I fill that up with hot water. I stick that bottle into a sock, usually the sock I wore that day because I try to change my socks into dry ones before I go to bed. Put it in there and then stick it in the sleeping bag. Two is even better. One down by your feet, one up by your core. Snuggle that baby and you'll be warm all night long. So really recommend some hotties in your hot tent. It's a very nice experience. And one other thing that hotties might save you from doing is going and stoking your fire or reloading in the middle of the night. I don't really like to wake up if I'm sleeping good and warm, so even though it gets pretty cold, if I'm well insulated with my sleeping system and I can just stay in my bed, I'd rather do that and these hotties will buy you some more time. And they really can last all night long. Hack number seven, use a down quilt on top of your sleeping bag to get that extra insulation you need. Rather than having a special really cold weather sleeping bag for winter camping or for hot tent camping, I just use my regular sleeping bag the old one I've had forever, and I put my backpacking quilt on top of it. Now that down layer is going to give you the extra insulation and warmth you need on top. It was down to almost zero degrees Fahrenheit last night, and I was totally fine even well after my fire went out. So use a down quilt. It serves double duty for both backpacking and for winter camping. I really like that it packs down compact too. Makes it easy to transport and throw in a bag. Hack number eight. Use a USB rechargeable air pump, not only to fill up your sleeping pad with air, but to stoke your fire. This is something I discovered just by chance, and man, has it saved me a lot of time, and it just gets your fire roaring really quick. You just turn it on and stick it in front of the little air intake vents on your wood stove, and watch those flames rekindle. It'll really get a new piece of wood, especially if you put a bigger piece of wood right before you go to bed in there. That'll get it flaming and going really well. So use that little air pump to stoke your fire. Hack number nine, take a carbon monoxide detector for peace of mind when you're sleeping in a hot tent. I really like doing this. I just started doing it because I always have a little bit of an uneasy feeling. Is it safe in here or is it not? I leave a window crack just to have a little extra ventilation all night long even though it let cold air in or hot air out. But now I've got this little carbon monoxide detector I picked up for about 20 bucks on Amazon. It doesn't take up hardly any space. It works. It gives me a little peace of mind. And I think it's just a good idea. Even if you're using a little buddy heater or one of those propane heaters instead of a wood stove, this might be even a better idea for you. So there's some expensive ones, some nice ones meant for camping that can be up to 100 bucks, but I don't think that's necessary. Just a cheap little one like this will get you by and give you a little peace of mind. Hack number 10 for hot tent camping is to use your loft in your tent like a sling just over your wood stove so that you can dry out your gear. Now this was actually a suggestion from a viewer, so thank you for that, and I really like it. I normally just have my roof loft in this tent sitting above, but instead of just having it overhead where it even takes up a little bit of head space and ceiling room, I really like how when you sling it up that you can just set your gear in there. I throw my gloves in there, I hang my pants from it to dry out overnight. You could hang other gear from there. Just to make sure, especially since a lot of these are made of mesh material or some kind of polyester, that you don't, you have it well clear of any of your pipes. You don't want any of that business going on, having melting or causing a fire, but it works great. And those are my 10 hacks for hot tent camping. They're especially useful when you're out in the winter, when you're out in the snow, if you like this video, I suggest you watch another one that I did recently where I recommend some of the best gear for hot tent camping. So be sure to check that one out. 
and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. In the meantime, happy hot tinting.